It's tournament time for women's basketball as they face Georgia Tech in the PMAC on Sunday. Meanwhile, the men's team goes for an upset in the NIT tonight against SMU in Dallas. And Johnny Lombardi tries to make sense of all the madness from this weekend's NCAA tournament. You're at the sports desk, and it starts right now. Let's go! partners welcome to this here desk of sports i'm morgan beard and i'm kelsey winger morgan everyone's caught up in the madness from the men's tournament but the woman started play yesterday and lsu's very own pmac is the host to the first two rounds this is true kelsey while the men play at neutral sites certain women's teams play host to some tournament games one of those teams is the lsu lady tigers as they face 10th seeded georgia tech now with a rough end to the season lsu needed to start the tourney off hot as they did with a John Kenny opening three-pointer. You're going to see here in a little bit the Tigers, like I said, rough start to the end of the season, bowing out in the SEC tournament earlier than expected, but John Kenny getting the Tigers back on the right foot as the LSU Tigers started off hot. Danielle Ballard here started early and often as well as the Tigers jumped out to a 12-0 run to start the game against Georgia Tech. And after the timeout that Georgia Tech caught early in the game, Ballard another one as she had 24 points in the night, but the best at was her 17 rebounds. She's a guard, folks. But the person she was matched up against, Georgia Tech's all-time leading scorer, Tayana Marshall, right here with the layup, a part of her 20 points on the night. As Marshall and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets tried to cut the deficit down, Marshall with another and one layup here to bring the Yellow Jackets within two. But it was not nearly enough. Jean Kenny right here with the pass of her career, perhaps, to Teresa Plaisance for the easy layup as the Tigers started to pull away. Let's take another look at this in slow motion. One-handed pass, making it look easy, as Jean Kenny always does. Teresa Plaisance after the game. John Kenny said, if, John, if Teresa Plaisance is running back door, you better reward her. And she did there with a bow on it. And right there, John Kenny ends the game for the Tigers. They pull away for the 98-78 to victory over Georgia Tech. Now the Lady, Lady Tigers take on West Virginia Mountaineers for the second round matchup here at the PMAC tomorrow. But after the game, John Kenny talked about Danielle Ballard's amazing 17 rebound night. Dude, she had 17 rebounds. That's crazy from a guard. She played amazing. She set the tempo for the for us for the entire team. Um, just goes to show what a talented per, like player she is, and she can literally take over a game because she did. Players are becoming um, who they have always been. They're just realizing it now, and better late than never. That's what I tell them. So I'm proud of this group for for playing this game with high intensity um, for 40 minutes. And the men are moving in on a tournament of their own, the NIT, after a first-round win against San Francisco last week. Tonight, the Tigers face head coach Larry Brown and the SMU Mustangs for a Sweet 16 battle in the Moody Coliseum. SMU's only home loss of the season was to Louisville, and LSU is going for their third straight win on the road tonight. Tip-off is set for 8 o'clock, which is just under two hours away on ESPN. And the LSU baseball team got their first home SEC series underway this Friday at Alec Box Stadium versus Georgia. The Tigers were technically undefeated over the weekend as LSU used superb pitching from Aaron Nola to get a 4-0 shutout win on Friday night. The junior improved his record to 5-0 and his ERA to .22. The Tigers also got a dazzling outing from Jared Poche on Saturday in a low-scoring 2-1 win. Yet on Sunday, due to Georgia's travel constrictions, the game ended after 13 innings tied 2-2. The Tigers hit the road to play in Tulane tomorrow night in New Orleans. And on to the golf course. The Lady Tigers hosted the LSU Tiger Golf Classic this weekend here in Baton Rouge. LSU's Madeline Sagstrom led the Tigers finishing three under par for the tournament. Sagstrom finished tied for runner-up after a three-way playoff where Arkansas's Gabby Lopez won by a single stroke. As a team, LSU finished fourth in the Golf Classic. The Lady Tigers travel to the Dallas Athletic Club Invitational in two weeks on Friday, April 4th. And getting away from campus, a Baton Rouge woman who simply wanted to lose weight ended up gaining an entirely new lifestyle. Here's a preview of my story about Jessica Guidry that will air tomorrow night on Tiger TV. After a year, it was an entirely new person. She had changed completely. Average time, is, it's about two years. What did she do? Uh, she did, what, a year? Six, six months. They said six months. I, I counted. I think it was five, but I'm not saying anything. <laughs> She's the only person I've promoted on a podium, and I've promoted every one of her belts on the podium because it's just the way that she earns it. 
Check out the rest of Jessica Guidry's story tomorrow on First and Ten with Rachel Ritzlinski at 6 o'clock p.m. right here on Tiger TV. It's time for the first break here on the sports desk, but the madness continues when we return as Johnny takes us to the Lombardi Lounge. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. It was a wild weekend of college basketball as March Madness got underway. People all across America saw their brackets get busted by Cinderella's such as Dayton, Mercer, Stanford, and Stephen F. Austin. For this week's Lombardi, Lombardi Lounge, ooh, Johnny recaps the Madness from Sunday. Johnny, take it away. Thanks, guys. Welcome to this week's edition of the Lombardi Lounge. There was really some amazing basketball this weekend. Upsets, dunks, <laughs> comebacks, you name it. I would show you my bracket, but unfortunately, I burned it literally lit it on fire. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the round of 32 on Sunday. Starting off here, Iowa State and North Carolina. The Tar Heels with the lead, but it's Naz Long with the three for the Cyclones to get the game. Back close to the two-point game, and here's Kane with the and one. He missed the free throw, but Iowa State battles all the way back to tie it. McDonald for three for North Carolina. He cans that one, and the Tar Heels lead again. But Iowa State and Naz Long, ice cold veins, would not go away. Tie game here, North Carolina with the ball. The turnover. Ejim throws it down court to Kane, who's wide open to lay it in. Two-point lead for Iowa State. North Carolina would go down and tie the game, and it's Kane driving the last few seconds, and he lays it in for Iowa State. North Carolina, a last chance. The clock, as you see there, does not stop going. Roy Williams tries to call a timeout. The referees decide that the game was over. No time on the clock. North Carolina does not get a chance. Iowa State advances to the Sweet 16, and number one seeded undefeated Wichita State heading against SEC Kentucky, and it's Van Vliet there with the dunk. This game was amazing. If you're watching this game, it was awesome. Clay Anthony Thomas here with the pass, the dunk of the year, in my opinion. Throwing it down, Clay Anthony Thomas, certainly to be in the NBA next year. An unbelievable start for Wichita State as them and Kentucky went back and forth all game long as Clay Anthony, Ron Baker, and Van Vliet leading the Shockers to the undefeated season, but would it end in the second round? Kentucky down by three, and he banks it to tie the game. Wildcats not going anywhere. Ron Baker for three. He nails it. Back and forth, Wichita State with the ball again. It's Ron Baker, finds Clanthony, Clanthony Early for three again. And Wichita State and Kentucky trading threes. Clanthony Early again. I can't seem to say that enough as he can the three there for the Shockers. But then Kentucky, the three here to take the two-point lead. Wildcats not going anywhere. But then Wichita State down four. It's Ron Baker, a contested three-point shot. That's a prayer right there. And his prayer is answered with the bank. Bank is open for the Shockers. A missed free throw for Kentucky and Van Vliet. A chance to keep the undefeated season for Wichita State. No good. The eight-seeded Kentucky Wildcats pull off the upset. And Wichita State, undefeated number one seed. They lose their first game of the season. It's Kentucky going to the Sweet 16 to play their arch rival, Louisville. After the game, Wichita State head coach Greg Marshall gave his thoughts on his Wheat Shockers that just fell just short of running the table. Just excited um, to be sitting here with these gentlemen and... Um, the joy that they brought us all year long will, will live with me forever. So congratulations to Kentucky. All right, well, that's going to do it for me. Make sure to keep it here at the Lombardi Lounge for every Monday for more March Madness updates as the tournament goes on. I'm sure my co-anchor's brackets are just as trash as mine and the other 11 million across the nation. Well, Johnny, speaking of which, a quick Tiger TV bracket challenge update shows Sports Showtime reporter Monica Resch is currently oh. in first place with Alex Chaney, Johnny Lombardi, actually, and Pat Gunther Ooh. close behind Kelsey. Pretty no. good stuff. <laughs> what about you, Morgan? How you doing? Oh, uh, well, hey, what do you know? It's time for a commercial break. How convenient. We'll be right back after this. When we come back, we'll take a look at a couple of the most memorable images from the first weekend of the tournament with the Tiger TV Sports Twist. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sports Desk. Now to keep up with the March Madness theme, Johnny, you've discovered a trend that's been sweeping the nation since Friday. Absolutely. Yes, Kelsey. Now we all know about the Twitter phenomena such as Duffnering or Tebowing, but a new post has hit the Twitter world by storm since Dayton upset, upset Ohio State last Thursday. Crafting. Look at that. This picture was taken of Aaron Kraft after his dejected loss, so us at Tiger TV thought it would be a good idea to take some pictures of Tiger TV sports employees crafting throughout the office today. So let's take a look. And there's uh, producer Patrick Clay with his uh, sunglasses on. There's uh, Josh Jackson, Reveille entertainment writer and Funyun writer, looking good there crafting. And there's our wonderful weather lady, Christian Bennett, outdoors naturally doing her crafting. Sports reporter okay. Monica Resch found a nice place next to a bush to do her crafting. And there's our sports director, Show Alex Cheney, showing some belly button here, scandalous on the sports desk. Oh, no. 
Here's Taylor Curet in the camera lab with in his mic. natural habit he with his mic. mic. Sports reporter Taylor Curet. Patrick Gunther, a.k.a. White Chocolate, with his crafting <laughs> post. You'll see him on Wednesdays. And go update yourself, everyone, as Travis Cobb does a little crafting on his own. And then after Texas defeated Arizona State at the buzzer, the Sun Devils have gave us another picture. But I'm I mean, not going to have enough time to look at that, unfortunately. You can check that out on Tiger TV. TV, though. But that's all for the sports desk this evening, folks. Make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest news at TTV underscore sports. And you can catch us here next week on Campus Channel 75 at 6 o'clock. For Morgan Beard and Johnny Lombardi, I'm Kelsey Winger. See you next time.